Intel's first ARC GPU review is here. Welcome to the product review hub. Not to be overly dramatic, but this may well be one of the most significant days in the history of PC gaming. This morning, Intel announced the availability and pricing of its first batch of ARC GPUs. This marks the introduction of a third significant rival to the market that has long been dominated by NVIDIA and AMD or ATI back in the day for as long as many gamers and content creators can recall. The only question now is whether or not Intel's discrete GPUs are any decent at all. Right away, I'll point out that Intel did not share any direct comparisons with its competitors, we'll have to wait for real-world benchmarks to supply us with that information. Nonetheless, there is a great deal to unpack here. The technically minded can check out Intel's formal statement, but we've compiled a list of the most important points you should be aware of. So can I go out and get an Intel GPU and install it on my desktop computer right away? Not quite yet, at least. Intel is introducing its ARC family of graphics processors in stages, beginning with entry-level devices intended for consumer laptops. So far, Intel has classified its graphics processing units GPUs into three categories, ARC 3, ARC 5 and ARC 7. In contrast to ARC 3, which is targeted for thin and light laptops and is focused on offering a great 1080p experience, ARC 5 and ARC 7 are intended at higher resolutions, higher frame rates and more sophisticated effects. Intel ARC-only ARC 3 processors are now available for purchase, and devices from Samsung, Asus, Dell, Lenovo, HP, Acer and other manufacturers will be using them. The earliest ARC 3 models are separated into two groups, the ARC 350M and the ARC 370M, with the latter being the more powerful of the two. Laptops with ARC 5 and ARC 7 GPUs will begin to appear in the early summer, and desktop and workstation GPUs will be available this summer, according to AMD. Size! What distinguishes Intel's ARC processors from their counterparts from AMD and NVIDIA? Intel's XE Matrix extensions, XMX, AI engines, which reside alongside regular GPU vector engines in each of the company's XE graphics processors, are perhaps the most notable piece of the technology on display. In comparison to typical GPU vector units, Intel claims that the company's XMX engines offer a 16x boost in computational capability for completing AI inferencing processors. Even though it's a bit of a technical jargon, it really means that, under perfect implementation, Intel's XMX technology should be far more efficient at completing AI operations than traditional GPUs. It remains to be seen how much of a difference this makes in the real world, but Intel is making a big deal out of ARC's potential to combine standard graphics performance with artificial intelligence augmentation. Intel ARC is a graphical user interface GUI for Intel processors. As a result, ARC GPUs will be able to handle Intel's XESS upscaling technology, which is based on artificial intelligence. XESS, like NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR, allows your GPU to generate graphics at a comfortable level, for example, 1080p, but output a result that seems much closer to native 4K than the resolution at which it was rendered. Unsurprisingly, Intel claims that because its XMX cores are so effective, its version of AI upscaling is more efficient than the competition's, but we'll have to wait and see if it holds up in direct comparisons with the competition. Unfortunately, XESS does necessitate the participation of game creators in order for the technology to be supported. Having said that, one of the most appealing aspects of XESS is that it's not limited to Intel's GPUs. However, despite the fact that it works best with XMX, it can also be used with a wide range of contemporary competitor GPUs from AMD and NVIDIA, as well as Intel's less powerful Iris graphics thanks to the use of older DP4A technology. In the long run, this increases the likelihood of widespread adoption of the technology. In the meanwhile, Intel claims that more than 20 games will be compatible with XESS when it becomes available later this month. What else is ARC capable of? As a complement to the AI enhancements, Intel claims that its deep link technology will allow ARC graphics processors to work more seamlessly with Intel's CPUs and integrated graphics to enable significant performance gains across various applications and workloads. Dynamic power share can boost performance by up to 30% in intensive workloads by rapidly adjusting the power consumption of the CPU and graphics processor based on the needs of the application. It is possible to reduce render time by as much as 60% as compared to the Iris XE graphics alone by utilizing the media engines from both your integrated and dedicated graphics, according to AMD. In a variety of novel workloads, hypercomputing can deliver up to 24% greater performance by merging compute and artificial intelligence capabilities of the CPU, integrated Iris graphics and dedicated ARC graphics all at the same time. Intel Arc is a graphical user interface GUI for Intel processors. In addition, there is support for DirectX 12 Ultimate, which includes capabilities like ray tracing and variable rate shading. 
There is also mesh shading and sampler feedback. The use of hardware accelerated AV1 encoding and decoding results in game streams that are 50% greater in quality while using the same amount of data bandwidth as H264. To reduce steering while keeping latency as low as possible, the adaptive sync and speed sync features are used. Mood sync aids in the reduction of ripping by, in essence, making it appear less janky. Support for two 8K screens at 60Hz or four 4K displays at 120Hz depending on the resolution. Intel's Arc Control app, which is similar to NVIDIA's GeForce Experience and AMD's Radiant software, serves as an all-in-one center for viewing and altering settings, much like NVIDIA and AMD's respective software. Okay, but do we have any clue how Arc stacks up versus NVIDIA and AMD GPUs at this point? Unfortunately, it's simply too early to know at this point. There were no direct comparisons made between Intel's Arc Briefing and its competitors, merely with the company's own Iris Xe integrated graphics system. It demonstrates significant improvements, as shown in the chart below, but this was expected when switching from Integrate Graphics to a dedicated graphics chipset. With respect to both the intended power consumption as well as the number of execution units, the Arc 350M appears to be competitive with NVIDIA's MX500 series GPUs, while the Arc 370M appears to be competitive with a mobile RTX 3050 GPU. However, as is always the case, the evidence is in the pudding. Intel's XESS and Deep Link technologies may be able to provide it a competitive advantage in some instances, but a lack of optimization may allow NVIDIA to take the lead in others. What does this signify for the future of the IT industry? Whatever the case, the most intriguing aspect of this announcement is the fact that we now have any actual competition to NVIDIA and AMD at all, let alone from such a significant competitor as Intel. When it comes to laptops, Intel has the distinct benefit of theoretically being able to cohabit as efficiently as possible while limiting power consumption, which is very beneficial. While many of us are still wanting to see what Intel will do in the desktop graphics market, it's probable that Intel's move into the mobile market will have a broader impact on the industry as well. Because of this, there is a very real prospect that Arc will lead to a greater proliferation of dedicated graphics in lighter and more cheap laptops, especially as competition results in improved performance. Intel's Arc launch may have been most notable for the number of manufacturers who have already committed to using the new graphics chipset, particularly in the high-performance graphics segment. While gaming laptops with strong GPUs are readily available, there has historically been a significant performance gap between conventional lightweight laptops and those designed specifically for gaming. AMD has attempted to close some of the gap, but Intel's market dominance will certainly aid the company in its efforts to push for more devices to include Arc graphics technology. The first Arc-enabled devices will be available for as little as $899, indicating that discrete graphics in laptops is going to become far more widespread. One thing is certain, the GPU industry has never been more exciting than it is right now. Thanks for watching this video, make sure to hit like and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that already.